Hey guys, welcome to a new biochemistry lesson. Today we'll talk about coupling of the electron transfer chain and oxidative phosphorylation. So we have drawn for you a mitochondria here with the matrix, also called the N site, the inner membrane, the intermembrane space, also called the P site, and the outer membrane. And the complexes that you can see here from 1 to 4 are a part of the electron transfer chain and this orange one down here is the also called the ATP synthase. We will now start our video by talking about the last part of the Krebs cycle. NADH and FADH, which were produced in the other steps of the cellular respiration cycle, will be used as the electron carriers. They will deliver electrons to the molecules. During the electron transfer chain, products will continuously be pumped out into the intermembrane space or used within the complexes for reactions. The amount of protons that are pumped out of the matrix will make an electrochemical gradient since there is now a smaller amount of protons on the inside. The outside will be positively charged and the inside will be negatively charged. ADP synthase is an enzyme in the membrane that will continuously turn ADP and phosphate into ATP by pumping the protons from the intermembrane space back into the matrix. When the protons go back into the intermembrane space, they need to go back through the membrane via the ADP synthase, which fuels the ADP production. This way, the ADP production is completely dependent on the respiratory chain and the electron transport because without it, there would be no protons going back out and no proton gradient. The electron transport chain is dependent on the oxidative phosphorylation since this process will be taking protons back into the matrix and the electron transport chain depends on that there are protons available in the matrix. In this second part we will talk about uncoupling products which will delete the product gradient and therefore stop the ATP synthesis. While they delete the product gradient and directly affect the ATP synthesis to stop, they do not affect the electron transport chain. The chain will keep on pumping protons out into the intermembrane space which will then be pumped back into the matrix by the uncoupling products instead of the ATP synthase. There are different uncoupling products like DNP, FCCP, and thermogenin. Thermogenin is an example of an uncoupling product that is located in the brown adipose tissue. When thermogenin is active, it will pump protons from the intermembrane space to the matrix, and by this process, it will generate heat. We can therefore say that there are exceptions for when the electron transport chain and the oxidative phosphorylation are dependent on each other. If there is an uncoupling product that pumps protons back inside the matrix, the ATP synthase is not directly needed for the electron transport chain. However, this is only temporary and would not work in the long run. It would eventually lead to an accumulation of protons in the intermembrane space in this last part of our video, we are talking about inhibitors, which are molecules that will, in different ways, affect the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. As you can see in this table, there are a lot of different inhibitors, but we will talk about cyanide as examples. Cyanide is an inhibitor which is considered toxic since it binds to the fourth complex of the electron transport chain. It attaches to the iron within this protein complex and inhibits the normal activity of the complex system. It binds tightly so that it cannot transport any electrons to oxygen. This blocks the further passage of electrons throughout the chain, halting the ATP production as well. We hope you enjoyed our videos. Thank you very much for listening. Absolutely. Absolutely.